Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So this is going to be a breakdown of Marvel's Daredevil Netflix TV series. They've been making a whole bunch of Netflix announcements, like they just cast Mike Coulter as Luke Cage, so I'll talk about that stuff too. So in order of premiere dates, here's what's going on in the Marvelverse. Daredevil, then Jessica Jones, then Luke Cage, then Iron Fist. There's a rumor that Daredevil is going to premiere May 1st, on the same day as Avengers Age of Ultron. They might push that around a little bit, but it makes sense that they're going to release it somewhere near Age of Ultron just to maximize on awareness. They'll spend no less than $150 million promoting Age of Ultron, so they're going to capitalize on that as much as possible. So Charlie Cox is playing Matt Murdock. We're going to watch him become Daredevil in the course of this series. It's based on The Man Without Fear, the Frank Miller miniseries. It was only five issues in the comics. The artist on it, John Romita Jr., is actually blowing it up with Jeff Johns on Superman right now. Anytime I see him on a new title, I just think kick-ass whatever, like kick-ass Superman. So think of this as kick-ass Daredevil. I'm a really huge fan of his artwork, so be sure whenever the episodes start airing that you look in the backgrounds for Easter eggs for John Romita Jr. art. Sometimes if they have posters hanging in scenes, they'll have the, the original artwork from the comic book. Just to explain the rest of the main cast for the show, Deborah Ann Wall is going to be Karen Page. If you remember her, she was Jessica Hamby on True Blood. She's one of my favorite gingers on TV right now, so I'm looking forward to seeing her in this superhero universe. She does genre really well. I was, I was a fan of the Jessica Hamby character, at least for the first couple of seasons. I didn't watch True Blood after like season 3 or 4. Karen Page is the longest running love interest for Daredevil in the comics, so she'll be Charlie Cox's love interest in this story. In the context of the Daredevil universe, she works at the law firm that Matt Murdock works at. Like you'd expect, their relationship usually takes a downhill turn once he reveals his secret identity to her, but that remains to be seen whether or not he's going to do that during the series, but I feel like they will go there. There was a brief period in the 80s when she became Daredevil's sidekick, so we might get to see Vampire Jessica kick some butt. Strong females are a really big theme in Netflix shows right now, like Orange is the New Black, so it stands to reason that they would cast someone who could do action, as well as do the love interest drama stuff. Vincent D'Onofrio is going to be the big villain, as Kingpin of course. He will be bald. I know there was some question about that as to how true to the role he would be. Vincent D'Onofrio is known as being more of a method actor, like he'll go to crazy lengths to inhabit new characters. I'm not really into procedurals, so I don't watch a lot of Law & Order, but he is a really good actor, so I'm excited to see him inside the Marvelverse. Eldon Henson is going to be Foggy Nelson. He's Matt Murdock's law partner and a good friend. You probably remember him as Pollux from Hunger Games Mockingjay. Rosario Dawson, also great actress, is going to play Claire Temple. The really cool thing about her is that in the comics, she's actually the romantic interest for Luke Cage. Since they just cast Mike Coulter as Luke Cage, Luke Cage is obviously not going to appear in the Daredevil series because they finished shooting that a while ago. We might get references to him, but it remains to be seen whether or not Rosario Dawson's character will have a relationship with Mike Coulter's character. All the characters are crossing over in the Defenders movie and some will appear in each other's series, but they haven't really explained who is going to be in what. I would expect there to be at least a loose crossover, like in the way the Arrow and Flash crossover. Scott Glenn is going to play Stick. He's Daredevil's sensei who teaches him how to fight. I'm a fan of Scott Glenn, but we'll see how he looks once he's in character. On the page, I don't buy him as this wise martial arts master, but if he can pull it off, more power to him. I'll withhold judgment till I actually see him. Even though they're adapting Frank Miller's story, The Man Without Fear, there will be some minor changes for TV. Like there is a Henchiro character that they created just for the show. So just spoilers for the comic book, I'm just going to explain what the broad storyline is. It is the origin story retold again, so we'll watch him go from being a kid to becoming Daredevil. It's wiping the slate clean for everyone that saw the Ben Affleck Daredevil and lived to tell the tale. I know, those are dark times. So in the context of the story, he grows up the son of a boxer named Batlin Jack Murdock. His father gets tied up with the mob, refuses to take a dive, so the mob comes after him, which is Daredevil's big call to action. He's approached by Stick, who is played by Scott Glenn, who teaches him how to become a warrior. In the story, it's actually radioactive chemicals that blind him. I don't know how crazy they'll get with it. Normally getting splashed in the face with radioactive chemicals would melt your face off. The story takes place in New York in Hell's Kitchen, for those that have ever been there. It's still called Hell's Kitchen, but it's not the Hell's Kitchen of New York today. Ever since Mayor Giuliani in real life Disneyfied Times Square, things got so much cleaner. Like, he cleaned up Hell's Kitchen too. That being said, in the Netflix series, it's going to be in modern day, but it will be the Hell's Kitchen of Frank Miller's story. Like, it'll be dark, gritty, dirty, dangerous. One bigger change from the comic to the Netflix series is they're not doing Elektra. She's in the comic book story, but they're not going to do her in the TV series. What they'll probably do is give some aspects of her character, like the more butt-kicking aspects, to Karen Page. 
She's not going to be Electra. Like, she's not going to turn into Electra. She'll just be the one doing some butt kicking. Once Matt Murdock becomes Daredevil, once he takes on the persona, it becomes a revenge story. He's going to start out in the black suit, but he will get the red suit by the end of the series. There was some question initially as to the way they were going to release the episodes, but now it looks like they're just going to dump them traditional Netflix style all at once. A lot of the comic book series takes place when he's in college. They might montage past a lot of that because most of the behind the scenes footage we've seen is of him as a lawyer in Hell's Kitchen. So they might just blow through the backstory in the first two episodes. With the exception of flashbacks, the series, all the Netflix series are going to be chronological. So Daredevil will come first and then after the events of that, Jessica Jones, the events of that series will pick up and then so on with Luke Cage and Iron Fist and then the Defenders. I mean, each of the series is going to tell a bit of an origin story, so there will be a lot of flashbacks. But for the most part, think of them as being chronological. The Marvel films have kind of played around with how that's going to happen in Phase 3. Honestly, when it comes to the Daredevil series, I'm really looking forward to it being super violent. They did say because it's Netflix, they can be super violent, unlike the ABC shows like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agent Carter. Those are network TV shows, so they can't get as crazy. And then there's the absence of Elektra. She's a huge character in Frank Miller's series, so either they're going to include her as a surprise or they're not going to include her at all. I know I said that they weren't going to include her earlier. They just they haven't listed her on the cast list. She wasn't seen behind the scenes, so I'm assuming that they didn't include her. They just wrote her out of the series. A lot of the comic book takes place in Boston, but they shot the series in Hell's Kitchen, so I think that they're just moving the story to Hell's Kitchen too, which is actually where he was born. Remember that it's a mini-series, so it's going to be relatively self-contained, but it will connect with the other Netflix series. They only just now cast a couple of the Netflix characters. Kristen Ritter is going to be Jessica Jones. Mike Coulter, obviously Luke Cage. Right now, my favorite pick for Iron Fist is Matt Zerke, but they haven't cast that character yet. They're still looking. Stephen DeKnight, who's the showrunner on Daredevil, announced that they finished filming just a little bit ago. They announced Kristen Ritter several weeks ago, so it's possible that they did have a cameo from Jessica Jones at the end of the Daredevil series. If they're going to have a Luke Cage cameo in Jessica Jones, then presumably they'd do the same thing for every series, and there'd be at least one of the other characters in each of the series before the Defenders. Each of the four characters will get their own 13 episode series. The Defenders miniseries is only going to be four to eight episodes. One of the big things they have confirmed about the series is there's not going to be a lot of superpowers. These are all street level heroes, that's what they're billing them as, so it's going to be very realistic. So think Arrow Season 1. They haven't said whether or not they're going to do a Season 2 for any of the series. I think it's going to depend on the success, how happy they are with everything once it airs. But it stands to reason if it's really successful, they'll keep doing it. Just taking a look at the way Marvel is choosing to release new IP, I'm really excited about Netflix as a platform. I think what you'll see is once they get done with these core street level heroes, they'll start looking to other characters too. So whenever they hit season two of some of these shows, we might see other characters. Punisher is one that I'm really hoping to see. If he makes it into a movie, it would probably be only as a minor cameo. I think it's more realistic that he would show up in one of the Netflix shows. Jessica Jones is supposedly going to premiere later this year, but that's not confirmed. It could be pushed to early 2016, depending on when they shoot the pilot. There are rumors that Paul Rudd's Scott Lang could have a cameo in Jessica Jones. The timing would definitely work out the same way that Avengers Age of Ultron and Daredevil's release are working out. That's if they go with the fall premiere for Jessica Jones. Scott Lang and Jessica Jones have some crossover in the comics, so that's just why people are thinking in that direction. It's totally unconfirmed, it's just a rumor, but I think it would be really awesome to see Paul Rudd to see like a movie character show up in the Netflix series. So let me know, what are you most excited to see in all, like, all these new Marvel Netflix series? I mean, do you really enjoy that they're doing this on Netflix? And actually, here's a big question for you guys. Do you want to see Punisher get his own Netflix series, or do you want to see him in a movie? In related news, I'm working on an Agent Carter video. It'll start on January 6th. It airs the same time Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. airs. So if you watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., whichever country you live in, it's going to be on the same channel during the same time that normally airs. It'll run for eight episodes, and then Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. will come back. I will do weekly videos just like I normally do for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so be sure to subscribe to get everything. In addition to the live-action TV stuff, they are working on a Guardians of the Galaxy cartoon. They haven't announced when they're going to start airing episodes. It might be October 2015, so it might not be till the fall. But I will do a video for that too, real soon. In related movie news, the only real big recent development is that Scott Derrickson, the director of Doctor Strange, posted this fan art of Benedict Cumberbatch with the beard. They're calling it Cumberbeard, but because it's fan art, I'm not sure whether or not he'll actually have a beard in the movie. I don't think that he will, because it seems a little silly. They tend to tone things down a little bit when it comes to the movie, so we'll see. Benedict Cumberbatch is awesome, but Cumberbeard is not. 
Right now, if you're actually watching this on your mobile phone or on your tablet, you can click up here for mobile links. It's the same as the links over here, but click here to catch up on what's going on with the movies in phase three and click here for my top 10 TV shows this year. Just shows that I watched. I think people are a little confused by that. Thank you so much for watching. So let's all high five. I will see you guys tonight.